actually started um, in bands when I was 12. Um, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, started as a, a vocalist, and then we had a bass player that kept going away to college prep school every summer, so third year he did that, I said, hey, let me try. So when he came back six weeks later, I had his gig. Uh, <laughs> I offered to leave the band, but it was just one of those things that, uh, you know, as soon as I picked it up, I just felt like, wow, this is really where I belong. Um, and uh, so I worked around my hometown of Columbus, Ohio for many, many years uh, and uh, always wanted to come to the West Coast. I always had a pull on my heart uh, to come to California and uh, got out here in, I think, late in 1978, something like that, and uh, immediately got blessed with uh, a staff studio gig uh, doing jingles and stuff like that. And then uh, started, you know, uh, getting calls to do other stuff. Uh, Neil Larson and Buzzy Feetin, first major phone call that I got. Uh, I was really excited to get that gig. Um, and then uh, Kenny Loggins for a while, and uh, Tim Weisberg, Dave Mason, uh, track with Bette Midler, a bunch of folks like that, just doing sessions and tours. And um, and then I got saved about 14 years ago. And uh, then actually discovered the reason why I had such a strong pull in my heart to come to California. Uh, the whole time I thought it was, you know, for a secular music career. And uh, I was actually I was blessed with a great career. But the whole purpose for my being out here uh, was to serve the Lord and to get saved. Uh, praise God. Uh, so there's a uh, a great worship leader, Sharia Bissonette, married to the great bass player Matt Bissonette, and. Uh, She's the first one that got me involved in worship. Uh, she would just, after I got saved, uh, Capo Beach Calvary in uh, Capo Beach, California. is uh, the church that, that the Lord led me to. And uh, Sharia asked me to play on the worship team. And I said, no, the building will fall down. You don't need that. And uh, she, uh, she was very persistent. You know, the Lord just uh, put it on her heart to keep, keep coming after me. So... Um, I finally agreed to do it, uh, thinking, boy, you know, this is way beyond anything that I know about or deserve to be doing. And uh, and that certainly is still true. You know, it's by His grace. Uh, but that started, um, you know, service, you know, and, uh, being in the Lord's service for the last 14 years. I was at Capitol Beach for about eight and a half years. Um, left there, got called out to Saddleback for about a year, uh, left there, was with Don McClure for about a year. And then um, Don took me to lunch one day and said, you know, why don't you want to lead? And uh, Don McClure, you know, of course, uh, a great man of God, pastors, was a Billy Graham guy, been around forever. And uh, I said, you know, I, I'm not sure that's my calling. I'm happy to just kind of sit in the back and play bass and produce some of these guys and do charts, whatever. But I never felt like I was worship leader material. And uh, after we had that talk that day, I was pulling out of the parking lot of that church, Calvary Chapel, which is uh, in Irvine. And I got a phone call from the worship leader here at Jubilee South Coast who was leaving. And he was looking for phone numbers. He wanted Sharia's number, Chris Falson, a great uh, writer, uh, worship leader, and some other people. And at the end of the conversation, he said, why don't you just do this? And once again, I said, nah, I, don't, I don't think I'm the guy for that. And then as soon as we hung up, I got a call from a church in Oceanside uh, asking me to come down and uh, interview for the position of the worship leader there. So that's when the Lord really had my attention. And, you know, I said, okay, this is obviously a God thing here. So, um, you know, we need to go ahead and check it out. So I get to bring in a lot of musicians that I really love to work with and praise with that are... Uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, but, you know, they're professional musicians. This is how God has gifted them to take care of their family. So um, it's not perfection that we seek, but it, it is excellence um, to take before the throne. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's currently where we're at. And it's a challenge to do that, as I'm sure every other worship leader knows, and Christian musician. Um, the attacks, you know, spiritual attacks are, are pretty strong whenever you're, you know, if, if you're not doing anything to threaten um, 
Satan and, and his minions, then you know nothing comes against you. But when you start really stepping into some things, uh, spiritual warfare can get really, really thick. And uh, but by focusing on God instead of the things that come against you, uh, it strengthens you to get through this this uh, position that the Lord has called you to. And uh, so I recommend that every uh, worship pastor, worship leader, uh, not forget uh, you know that their connection is with God, and uh, and to seek that out first, as obviously the Bible tells us to do. That's why I just you know uh, encourage people who are in ministry uh, to always seek uh, your relationship first, uh, because it's so easy to get caught up in in busy work. You know, we always think that, you know, we have another task to do, another task to do. And uh, I'm reading a great book right now. Uh, Chuck Swindoll is the author. It's called So You Want to Be Like uh, Jesus. And there's uh, 12 different steps to this. So I won't go into the whole book, but uh, I strongly recommend it uh, to, uh, to anybody, really, who's a brother or sister in Christ. But certainly people who are in God's service, it's... Uh, and a lot of times we forget what it's really about, which is to worship Him. And so um, to strongly encourage folks to uh, make sure that they keep that connection. My host, Dave Lopez, has just asked me the question of what do I expect from a guitarist um, when they come uh, to do worship with us? And, you know, the, the biggest thing is for me, uh, you know, I'm just a freak about the clock. You know, I really because there's so much ground to cover that we don't do a midweek rehearsal. Our rehearsal takes place an hour before the service. So, you know, the clock is very important to me with that. And I, I don't like to get run up against the wall with time to where there's, you know, you just go and say a short prayer and you're on it because I believe that you really have to focus on, on uh, your spiritual connection uh, before you get up and uh, lead God's people into praise and worship. So the things that are very important to me are somebody who's going to be on time, somebody who's prepared, who's looked over the music, uh, listened to the MP3s that we send out, and we're not trying to mimic a record. Um, I, that's just not anything that speaks to my heart. I believe that God gave each one of us a gift, and uh, we use our individual gifts to bring Him glory and praise. So uh, I don't want anybody necessarily come in sounding like the record, just kind of get um, the vibe of what's going on. And then we'll go ahead and see what happens once we get started and let the spirit lead. And uh, sonics are very important. So, you know, tones, uh, having the right gear for the gig. Uh, I speak to a lot of Christian musicians, uh, you know, younger guys who uh, they want to know how to improve what they're doing and, and how they can serve better. And, you know, I got to say craft. You got to work on your craft. Um, a lot of times... From my personal experience, there's a lot of situations where folks might be led into a situation of working uh, with a worship team, but they'll uh, not really stay working on their craft. And it's so important. Like I said earlier, it's not perfection, but it is excellence that we seek. And the only way to get there is by putting your time in on your instrument. Um, so I can't uh, stress that enough. Um, somebody who has a great attitude uh, who's easy to work with, who's going to come in and be a part of what's going on, be a part of the mix, and uh, not have their own agenda. It's uh, w Praise and worship, it's, it's such a, a different thing than you know secular gigs. Although we allow people to use their gifts here, uh, we love people who are great soloists because, once again, we feel like that's giving our gift back to the Lord. So we want to encourage that, but still somebody who is sensitive to the Holy Spirit um, so they can be led uh, by that and not necessarily their own agenda. It's kind of easy to, to forget about what we're doing here sometimes. And um, so with a, a guitarist that comes in prepared like that, that's, that's really somebody that I love to work with. It makes what I do a lot easier. When you have 13 different personalities on a stage in an hour to get through, uh, however long your, your uh, worship is, uh, you know, you, you really want to be efficient and just kind of get to it. 
So for me, that's probably the most important thing there, is just having somebody prepared, great heart, uh, connection, and that's it. It's on.